Thanks, Mike. Hey, Royce, is there a, is there a story behind the number nine that you've decided to wear? Um, a little bit, a little bit. Nine is actually both my parents' favorite number. It's also mine and my mom's birth month. So I was like, nine's a pretty good number. Nine, yeah, that's about it. That's cool. Was it was it your, your idea or was it one of your parents? No, it was my idea actually. And they're okay. yeah, they're both kind of happy when I told them that I was wearing nine. Are you expecting a lot of family and friends to be in attendance on Thursday? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Probably at least close to 30s, maybe 40s. Everyone's Is really that is that uh, like have you had have you had more more when you played in Calgary or I guess because you're back home you're gonna have a lot of a lot of ticket requests. <laughs> a lot is an understatement. <laughs> a lot is an understatement. But um, I think that was probably about typical because we'd only usually come to the East like twice a year, right? So whether it was Hamilton or to Toronto, it would usually be about the same. But because I'm playing at home now. Even like longtime friends, you know, a lot more people are going to be coming to games just because there's more games for them to make. You know, sometimes people's schedule wouldn't work out, right? So probably get more this year. Like every game I'm ex yeah, probably around 20 people at least every game. I'm excited for it too. Oh, that's good. Oh, hopefully, uh, hopefully your owners get give you give you a bit of a discount, Royce. <laughs> I've been telling them, if they gave me, like, a section, like, for example, like, one of the small sections, like, was it 123, section 123, that little strip, I promise you I can fill it. I can nice. probably fill in a whole regular section up, too. Why not? That, that's how you develop a, a fan base. Exactly. Hey, what, you're, you're, you, I mean, I mean, as you well know, BMO's the only grass field in the CFL. Is that something that you that you relish, or is or is or is it uh, problematic for you? No, love it, love it. You probably hear a lot of old guys say, "Probably means I'm getting old," but <laughs> it's I don't know. It's just being on grass is a little bit better on the joints, you know. And I think that is uh, that's a really good reason why I think, and I'm excited to play here at home because I think that will be able to help add a couple more years to my you know playing time. So. Oh no, no, absolutely. Now you, you just gotta be careful of the of the end zones. It's uh artificial turf. Yeah. I don't know who I got to talk to yet, but I'll meet them eventually. Have a little sit down about that. Yeah, I just talked to just talk to Danny. Danny Webb will get you the proper uh proper shoes for sure. <laughs> yeah, Danny's been taking real good care of us. He's been amazing. Oh, good guy. He's an institution. Hey mm -hmm. Rice, you're you're uh you're coming to a new team, but you, you've got a bunch of uh, former teammates around you. Has that made your transition a lot easier? Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Um, and I'm, I, I tell them all the time, like, I've been put in one of the most, for, like, in a less unfortunate situation, just being able to come to a team with a lot of familiarity with teammates and coaching. It's, uh, it's made coming home that much easier it's made getting to know all the other guys that much easier and uh, i'm really happy about that royce what have been your impressions of uh, coach mace this is his first run as defensive coordinator do you see any anything different in him maybe his uh i don't know is he more more intense is he more focused do you do you see the same old coach or do you see a, an evolution in corey definitely see evolution every year Ever since, uh, because he, I've been with him since uh, my rookie in Calgary, and every year it's like, just like we all do as players, you know, and all the other coaches do every offseason. I know he takes it very seriously because every year it's like, you guys should see how much work he puts into the game. Like, he is one of, like, I'd say he's one of my favorite coaches because of how much he puts in, like, kind of, you know, in the off hours into the game to finding little things to helping the players grow. So in terms of our personal relationship, it's still as great as ever. You know, like he and I, we have a great relationship. But outside of that, in terms of him as a coach, I love him, love him. What kind of identity do you guys hope to forge defensively, Royce? A dominant one. Very. That's, that's about all I could say.
Well, on paper, there, there's certainly uh, the potential for that. What about a coach like uh, Coach J Josh there, uh, Royce? What what kind of relationship do you have with him? Also a great relationship. But, um, he, too, was uh, my coach over in Calgary. So uh, since my rookie year, he and I have been able to form a kind of like a – I always allude to this, but it's kind of like a, it's a Star Wars reference, you know? Like, uh, you know, he's a little Jedi master. I'm a little Padawan working – so we've got a good relationship. Oh, that's cool. I'm 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 a, I'm old school, Royce. I'm more of a Star Trek guy, but I, that's all good. Hey, Royce. Lastly, on my end, do you think a tone can get set for the season opener? Absolutely. I think regardless of who or what team you are, the season opener is one of the most important games because no matter where you are in sports and you know in the workforce, wherever, how you start things is generally like. It's kind of like how you set the tone, right? Like where are you setting the floor at for the year? And depending where your ceiling is at, that says a lot. So this home That's opener right. is important for us. So I do got one more for you, Rose. I, I used to cover basketball back in the day, and uh, there were a lot of hoopsters coming out of Brampton. Did, did you play hoops? No, I didn't. But I was definitely around a lot of them, like a lot of them. I probably... Growing up, I was like one of the shortest out of like my friends, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, I know. Brampton. Brampton's become like an athletic hotbed, man. It's, something's in the water or something. I don't know. It's just Brampton. I keep telling everyone, Brampton's like the best Canadian city. We got the most talent. Yeah. Oh, no. The, tr trust me. I, I remember watching this kid named Tristan Thompson. <laughs> hey, he's doing pretty good for himself now, isn't he? No, 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 no he's not. Yeah, yeah, he's done. He's done really. He's done really well. No, no, Tristan. I know. I love. I love when I meet these kids. Like they're in grade nine, and next thing you know, it's like, wow, look what he's nice. become. But yeah, it's all good. Hey, listen, Royce. All, all the best to you. Okay, thanks for your time. Thank you very much. And you too. Next Thank question you. from David Morissuti from Fan Sided. Uh, thanks for doing this, and welcome home, uh, Royce. Uh, it's been not just a celebration for you, but for your whole family with your brother getting uh, drafted to the NFL. Have you and him kind of reflected on your journeys and where it's kind of taken you from the, your time in Brampton to where you guys are both now? And how what it's what are those conversations been like? Yeah, we definitely do. It probably like at least like once a week, if anything. Um, like what more can I say? It's been it's been kind of crazy, right? Like when you hear the story of the both of us, you know, like I, I get to play in the CFL, he gets to play in the NFL. That's literally that kind of you know dreams come true thing. So no, we definitely talk about it, you know, how far we've come, but it's also because um we need to remember, you know, like there's more. Like we have big goals and we continue to remind ourselves so we keep pushing ourselves. You know, he'll always like give me a call. And kind of remind me about you know like what I got to work on. I always call check in on him, see like you know. I don't know. We play the game for fun. We play the game out of love, and we play the game to be great. And yourself, what were the kind of the influences on you to pursue football? Were you big on watching the CFL growing up? What was kind of your your background there and getting to where you are now? Funny enough, it was actually my older brothers. I, uh, we have two older brothers, Miles and Leon. And Miles actually started for us. Um, he started when we first moved to Canada. He he was in grade nine when we had moved here. So um, it was like it was a very new sport for us. Like, and we just like kind of saw him playing, and it was like, oh, what's what's this sport we don't know? You know, because like we played like basically every sport growing up, but football was the one we never really knew uh, growing up in Africa. So when we got here, Miles started playing, like all of us were like, yo, what's he playing? Let's go see, let's go watch practice kind of stuff. And then eventually all four of us started playing and it was like, I don't know, it was, it was kind of special. And yourself being able to uh, you now work on the field and playing against this offense in practice, what do you see from this offense? Like, is this an offense that people should be, you know, getting really ex uh, excited about seeing on the field, you know? A lot of great receivers on this team. Uh, what are your impressions on them? Oh, it's definitely like we definitely have a lot of great parts over here um, on offense, on defense, and on special teams. I'm really excited for what we're going to do this season because, like you said, like um, 
there's a lot of good parts, a lot of great guys in the receiver room, a lot of great guys in the running back room and the whole line and in the quarterback room. So I'm very excited, you know, for what we're going to come out and do. And my final one here, when you finally get to that first game against Hamilton, is it going to be a little special knowing the rivalry and being that Toronto, you no, know, from Toronto and the GTA and knowing what that rivalry is going to be like? Yeah, most of um, Even in, like talking to the guys, I got a little taste of it during that preseason game of that like Toronto Hamilton rivalry. I'm really excited. And I think we get to play them, what, three times this year? I think you guys get them three times in one month. Yeah. So that month? Four times. Four, four times. Four times in five weeks. Guys, what more can we ask for? You know, what more can we ask for? I'm excited. Right. Very excited. Perfect. Well, good luck on Thursday and uh, hope you enjoy being back home. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Uh, can't wait to see you guys. Final question from Frank Stanici from Candid Frank Live. Royce, you talked a little bit about family. Um, you talked about people in the stands. Uh, you talked three brothers that play the game. How do you uh, uh, use that uh, familiarity, if you will, uh, to, and pressure to improve your game? Uh, um, I use kind of the pressure as fuel um, for me to focus, to be honest. And one of the things that come with, you know, playing the game is how well we can handle pressure and how well we can kind of refocus. And that's one thing we talk about in the locker room, you know. One great thing about football is that it gives you the opportunity every play to improve. And we talk about how important it is for, um, to work on that. Every play is a new play. Every play is a new, like, um, some of the guys, they say new life. You know, every play brings new life. There's a new opportunity for you to refocus no matter what happens the last. So um, I try to work every day using kind of the pressure. I don't really see as pressure. I use it more as fuel to being able to focus, saying, okay, I, I know I'm going to have, you know, family here that's going to be able to support me, but that doesn't mean, you know, I can just kind of take plays off or I can kind of relax. It's like I still got to go out there. I still got to do a job because while I'm here in this building, these guys are my family too, and I got to do right by them always. My, my last question is uh, when you're on your way to play the game, whether it's at home, whether it's in the car, whether it's in a train or walking or whatever, what are you thinking and what's motivating you? What are you looking forward to in as far as the plays that you make? Is there anything that jumps forward that you have as a target? You were talking about floor and ceiling. I'm asking specifically in the kind of plays that you, you want to make. Well, for me, it's like I go day by day, you know, like every day I, I have like a list of focuses, which I'm focused on today. Uh, that's kind of how I kind of approach it. I try not to think too big or think too small, kind of focus on the moment, focus on what I can control in the moment. So like in the morning during my commutes, it's literally like, all right. Um, typically, it's like, all right. Another day to get to work, another day to get to play football, you know, so first of all, I can't complain because right there, I'm blessed to have those two opportunities. And secondly, what am I going to do with my opportunity? All right, I got my list. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to focus on these things and try to get better with it. Thanks for this. I appreciate it. Good luck. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Royce.